Hi, this is Shadi. Today's unpublished story can be found in the Ikawa Maru Museum. The Ikawa Maru is a ship that is now still stationed on the port of Yokohama, turned into a museum, and this is where Jigoro Kano had his epic fight. Now, we all know that he was not a fighter per se. Sure, he was a great technician, he was a teacher, but stories of his fights are a rarity and of course story like this one i just have to share with you and it's about a challenge that he himself initiated against a russian seaman so the story dates back to 1889 and it was when the ship was leaving the port of yokohama towards europe and as it was passing the Indian Ocean, one day Kano Sensei was having a walk on the deck of the ship and he heard some commotion and it was people engaging in a physical challenge, a Swiss and a Dutch challenging a strong Russian man. And so they were pulling him, pushing him, trying to overcome him, but to no avail. And so, Kano sensei was walking by and so he talked to a Russian merchant and he said to him your countryman is quite strong but I could pin him down and he would be unable to free himself of course the Russian merchant started laughing and of course ran towards the other Russian man to tell him the ridiculous claim that Kano had made and so he wanted to challenge him and said, Okay, little man, I accept the challenge. Of course, people started to chant and root to people saying Russia versus Japan or big versus small, and they were laughing. Keep in mind, Kano is five foot two, 41 kilogram, so a very small man. And so the Russian positioned himself on the ground. On his back Kano pinned him and at the signal he tried to flee pushing pulling using all force but again to no avail and so Kano at one point he said okay this is enough he got up and let him go the Russian was furious and he says okay now it is my turn you lay on the back and I pin you down Kano gladly accepted and so he put himself on the ground on his back and the Russian tried to pin him and at the signal Kano immediately escaped and everyone was stunned the Russian man was furious he got up he says you coward you got out before I even had you down for real Kano sensei started laughing and he said when your opponent is about to get you do you wait until he closes up on you before you try to escape? You have to act right before total power is applied. This is the right time to escape and this is what I did. This is one of the basic principles of judo." End quote. The Russian asked for a rematch but this time standing and Kano again gladly accepted. So. The Russian was trying to strike and trying to attack, Kano evading all the strikes and at the right time he grabbed him and threw him with Seoyanagi and everyone was blown away. The spectators were surprised, the Russian seaman himself congratulated Kano Sensei for this amazing performance and his amazing fighting capabilities. So we can see that it is incredible that he himself initiated this fight. Keep in mind he was only 29 years old at the time, so he was young and it was pretty surprising to see him laughing and being sarcastic and starting from the ground also is a very surprising thing to hear because you know usually 
especially Kano. He would love self-defense and love the idea of the stand-up while being competent on the ground. But still, he used all leverage and all uh, positioning and to dominate a far larger man who works uh, in the sea. So you would think he is very physical and a big guy. And he was able to overcome him not only on the ground, but also standing uh, up. So uh, what he said to him was actually very interesting. Before someone lays in all of their strength and all of their weight on you, that's where you uh, escape. And it's actually true for everything, even when you are throwing. When someone is fully stable and fully uh, in their sheer and pure form, you cannot beat them. It's one of those ideals of the Itsutsu no Kata. And so as he is moving, as he is swaying, that's when you can sweep someone, regardless of how big they are. Um, when you beat someone far larger than you, you see them in the plus 100 kilo. It's when they are moving, never when they are static. And the same thing, you can say that he cheated or whatever, but he applied the right principles of judo because at one point you can only escape so many times especially on the ground and so he waited for the right time in judo a lot of timing is very important not just for foot sweeps we talk about timing when it comes to foot sweeps but it's for everything so um, I really find this uh, story quite intriguing uh, it's a shame that it's unpublished it's it can be found in the museum itself. The link uh, will be in the description uh, below. So this is for the people that can say that say, you know, he he was not good on the ground. That's why he avoided it. That's why he was angry at the Oda incident. No, he wanted judokas to have a full, complete arsenal. He wanted people to train kata, ground, and stand up. The Oda incident was that. Oda Tsunetani was only teaching Neiwaza and he was letting go of absolutely everything only for the sake of winning. And we can see this, it's a very uh, useful method when it comes to trophies and winning uh, in a controlled environment, man against man or person against person. Uh, it works and we can see it even in 1993 when Hoyce used basic Neiwaza to defeat all these other people who were far larger than him. So this idea that Kano did not like Neiwaza or he wasn't efficient at it, personally, I do not believe it. So if you have anything to add, please let me know down below. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.